Hey everyone, this video is on galvanic cells involving inert electrodes. Active electrodes are common amongst setups for galvanic cells. These are electrodes that are involved in redox reactions, either oxidation or reduction. In the first video on galvanic cells, we explored the galvanic cell comprised of a copper and silver electrode. In this example, the copper electrode underwent oxidation to form copper ions by losing two electrons and the silver electrode was involved as it was a product of reduction of silver ions. In both cases, these are classified as active electrodes as they are involved in oxidation and reduction. Active electrodes not only are involved in redox reactions, they also serve a very important purpose in galvanic cells. That is, they act as surfaces for conduction of electrons. When the copper electrode loses electrons, these electrons will flow towards the silver electrode. The silver electrode acts as an interface where electrons accumulate and are then gained by silver ions in a reduction reaction. Now, some redox reaction components and chemical species cannot be used as electrodes. For example, the oxidation of chloride ions in solution forms chlorine gas and electrons. Neither of these components are suitable for electrodes as they are not solids and they are not electric conductive. The reduction of hydrogen ions to form hydrogen gas is another example whereby neither of the species, hydrogen ion aqueous and hydrogen gas, are good conductors of electricity. In galvanic cells involving these type of redox reactions, we need to use an inactive or inert electrodes. These electrodes are materials that do not participate in redox reactions, yet provide a good material for electron conduction to occur. Inactive electrodes conduct electron flow as they are electrically conductive, but they are chemically inert so that they are not involved in redox reactions and will not interfere with the redox reactions that you want taking place. Materials that make a good inert electrode in galvanic cells include graphite, which is an allotropic carbon that's electrically conductive but yet chemically unreactive, and platinum, which is an inert metal that can also conduct electrons. Let's look at an example whereby an inert electrode is used. Here we have the oxidation half cell, whereby the nickel active electrode undergoes oxidation to form more nickel ions in the solution. In the reduction half cell, we have chlorine gas molecules gaining electrons to form more chloride ions in solution. The reduction reaction contains chlorine gas and aqueous chloride ions, neither of which are good conductors of electricity. So in order for the chlorine gas molecules to gain electrons that come from the anode, which is a nickel electrode, we need to submerge a piece of inert electrode, such as platinum, into the solution whereby the chlorine gas is being pumped into. The presence of platinum electrode allows the accumulation of electrons in the reduction half cell, and as this occurs, the chlorine gas molecules are able to gain these electrons to undergo reduction to form chloride ions. So in this example, the nickel electrode, which is the anode, is an example of an active electrode. The platinum electrode or the cathode is an example of an inert electrode. Its sole purpose is to conduct electrons and the platinum is not involved in the redox reaction. When we are writing to shorthand notation to represent a galvanic cell using inert electrodes, we must also include them in the notation. The oxidation half cell is always written first which is the nickel metal and nickel ions. This is then followed by the content of the reduction electrolyte solution, which are involved in the reduction equation. So these are the chloride ions, aqueous and chlorine gas. We separate the two using a vertical line because the two chlorine species are from different states. We then include the cathode, which is the inert platinum electrode, as you would normally do for any active cathodes. So collectively, on the right-hand side of the notation, we still have the components of a reduction half cell, which includes the inactive or inert electrode. Let's go through another example of a redox reaction whereby both oxidation and reduction require an inert electrode. 
The oxidation equation for this galvanic cell is the oxidation of iodide ions from iodine solid, and the reduction equation is the reduction of permanganates, specifically the manganese atom in permanganate, to form free manganese 2 plus ions. The first one is oxidation, and the second one is reduction. In both reactions, we do not have any appropriate chemical species that can conduct electrons. The manganese ion is not a solid, so it is not suitable as a surface for conducting electron flow. So what we need is two inert electrodes, for example graphite, labeled as carbon here, submerge in both solutions. The graphite submerged in the oxidation half cell is the anode, and the graphite submerged in the reduction half cell is termed a cathode. When the iodide ions lose these electrons from iodine solid, these electrons will then conduct through the graphite anode, flow from the anode to the cathode on the right hand side, and they will accumulate in the graphite cathode. While the electrons accumulate here, the permanganate ions in the solution will be reduced by gaining these electrons to form manganese 2 plus ions. The shorthand notation of this galvanic cell involving two inner electrodes is written by the same convention. We start with the oxidation half cell first, and this is starting with the graphite anode. And this is followed by the remaining components of the oxidation half cell, the aqueous iodide ions and iodine solid. We again separate the two using a vertical line because they have different states. This is then followed by the reduction half cell and all its components. And notice how all of the chemical species here are separated by a comma instead of a vertical line because these are all aqueous. And to finish it off, we need to write the cathode of the reduction half cell, which is also the graphite. This concludes the video on galvanic cells using inert electrodes. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.